Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. You, you can look at your neighbor next to you. You know how we do it every Sunday. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. And tell him I'm so glad to see you. And you know, and you know that was your wrong neighbor, right? So find another neighbor who is not your family member, who is not your daughter, who is not your sister. Find another member, another neighbor. Come on, come on. Look at somebody else. So, praise the name of the Lord. Uh, and before we go any further, uh, this week, on a Saturday note, we had to send home the home-going service for Brother Mukesh. And that was done Friday. And boy, oh boy, it was hard to see uh, a person who was this there for a period of time, but well enjoy himself in the Abri Tabernacle. Amen? Really enjoyed himself. And... Uh, we continue to keep that family in prayer, continue to keep Sister Sherry and the, uh, the, the children and grandchild in prayer. It's not easy, but all of us, if God spare life, we'll have to go that day or go that way one day. Amen. So, we continue, as I continue to say, we enjoyed for that short space of time with him, we really enjoyed his presence. Amen. So we continue to pray for each and every one. So we want to begin with a word of prayer today. Uh, hold somebody hand next to you. Father God, we pray today. Out of everything that we have been going through, my God, some had some fantastic week gone by. Some needed more sleep even today. Some, oh God, just don't know, even know what on earth they are doing here this morning. But they just tag along or probably come along. I know God, some just wanted to be here to show their thanks and appreciation. I don't know where you fall in that bracket this morning. Even if you're online and you're tuning in, I don't know where you fall in that bracket. But I have decided that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I like to repeat that so I'll get some witnesses here. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My God, today, we pray, O oh God, as our country enters into some by elections, I pray, O oh God, that it will be done safely, and that every person will do their civil duty, O oh God. Whatever they choose, whoever they choose, that's between you and them. But however, we pray, oh God, on that day that we will pray. We are going to do if we need to do. Some have chosen not. We respect that. But, oh God, I pray today that we will all focus in prayer as we, oh God, go out on that day. Because when we look at other countries, there seems to be fighting and war. We don't want that in our country. My God, I pray, oh God, today that you touch all our churches throughout our country uh, throughout the world that is in service of God. The Lord God, the people of God are crying out to you. Lord, there are so much things that are happening. And we probably shift our blame to everybody else. But oh God, unless you God do it. Unless you God turn it around. Unless you God make a way. My God, nothing will happen. Because you are in control. Somebody shout amen. I pray God today that you touch our family members, uh, friends, and those who have lost loved ones along the way. Those who are sick, those who are not well in their body. Father, today I break that spirit of infirmity. I pray God for those who are watching online and they need a touch. They can say and or type that it is can say that I need a touch from God. Father, I pray that you touch all, all our friends, our family, our, our various churches. Right now in the name of Jesus. I pray God that you touch Refuge Temple today at the service at 3 o'clock. That they will have a wonderful time in worshiping and in praising God. Father God, I pray that you move in this house in no other way but in the name of Jesus. And as you welcome our worshipers, I want you to make some noise. I want you to clap them. I want you to make some noise. Hallelujah. As we welcome our worshipers in Jesus' name. Somebody say, use them, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise Him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, before we start our worship this morning, I just want us to lift our hands 
and give God a praise this morning. You know, we are here, we are alive, you know, we are breathing this morning, and we have so much to thank Him for. So, you know, let's just lift our hands and, and give Him a, a little praise this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for coming into this place, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for life, Lord. We thank you for breath. We thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made, Lord. We pray, Lord, today as we come into this, your sanctuary, Lord, we come as a broken vessel, Lord. We come, Lord, for you to use us this morning as your instruments, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will usher from heaven, Lord, and you will pour out your spirit upon your people this morning, Lord. As we lift our hands to heaven this morning, Lord, we pray, Lord, that your spirit, your Holy Spirit, is going to come down this morning and touch us, Lord. Touch us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet this morning, Lord. Whatever we are going through this morning, Lord, we know that you can make a way. We know that you can heal us. We know that nothing is impossible with you this morning, Lord. And Lord, we just give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise this morning. Because you are God and you are God all by yourself this morning. Hallelujah. So we just give you a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Let's just wave. Let's just give God a wave offering this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are holy, Lord. You are wonderful this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise him. Into your hands I commit again with all I am for you, Lord. You hold my world in the palm of your hands and I am yours forever. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live, the reason that I sing with all I am. I'll walk with you this morning. I'll walk with you wherever you go, through tears and joy, I'll trust in you, and I will live. You didn't want heaven without us. You 
we bow down and worship Yahweh. We bow down and worship Yahweh. Yahweh. So we lift our hands. 
of the earth this morning because we are God's people. Hallelujah. We put the flavor in everything this morning. We season Hallelujah. the earth. So in short, let your light so shine. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. I carry the flavor of God. I season the earth. Sing, I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm the salt of the earth. I carry the flavor of God. I season the earth. Like a city built on a high hill. Like a city built on a high hill. Like the east, I influence the world. I am rich. I am prosperous. I am blessed. Like a city. Like a city built on a high hill. Like the east, I influence the world. I am rich, I am prosperous, I am blessed. I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the earth. Oh, I'm the light of the earth. I shine the light of God. I shine the light of God upon the earth. Upon the earth. I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. Of God upon the earth. I'm a city built on a high hill. I'm a city built on a high hill. Like the east, I influence the world. I am rich. I am prosperous. I am blessed. I'm a city built on a high hill. I'm a city built on a high hill. Like the east, I influence the world. I am rich. I am prosperous. I am blessed. I'm the salt of the earth. Oh, I'm the salt of the earth. I carry the flavor of God. I season the earth. I'm the salt. I'm the salt of the earth. Oh, I'm the salt of the earth. I carry the flavor of God. I season the earth. Like a city built on a high hill. Like a city built on a high hill. Like the east, I influence the world. I am rich. I am prosperous. I am blessed. Like a city built on a high hill. Like a city built on a high hill. Like the east, I influence the world. I am rich. I am prosperous. I am blessed. I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the earth. Oh, I'm the light of the world. I shine the light of God upon the earth. Of God upon the earth. I'm a city. 
city built on a high hill like these I influence the world I am rich I am prosperous I am blessed like a city built on a high hill like a city built on a high hill like these I influence the world I am rich I am prosperous I am blessed I am a warrior, a Christian warrior. Praise is my weapon in my right hand. I am a warrior, a Christian warrior. Praise is my weapon in my right hand. Warrior is, warrior Christian warrior, praise is my weapon in my right hand. I am a warrior, a Christian warrior, praise is my weapon in my right hand. Warrior is, warrior, oh. warrior is, warrior, oh. warrior, 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 She overturned my life for all. She overturned my life for all. And he made a way. And he made a way where there was no way. Jehovah has the final say. Give you 
glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory. Glory, glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. 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 Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. worship song before we bring on our pastor. Amen? Amen. And you know, we have so much to thank God for. Amen? Amen? We have so much to thank him for, for his goodness, Hallelujah. for his compassion this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. For his love, yeah. for his mercy, Hallelujah. for his kindness, and for his hope. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise him. Everyone needs compassion. A love that's never flailing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. The kindness of a savior. The hope of nations. Take me as you find me this morning. Take me as you find me. All my fears and failures. And fill my life again. I give my life to follow. Everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Salvation. He rose 
this morning. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We say it on the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We say it for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the That's the name of the Lord. Praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our, our worship team, our worship team deserves a clap. Amen. And my podium. Wow. Podium is falling apart this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. I, I need the other one too, son. Yes, excuse me. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. The, the, the song they were singing, Amen, Amen. Uh, you can be seated, Amen. It is so. And then the worshiper just forgot the rest of the verses. <laughs> and we waited on it, Amen. But God is good. God is so good. We are thankful to be here in the land of the living. Yeah. Let, let me rephrase that. I say, we are so thankful to be in the land of the living. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because when you look around and you see all that is going on, we thank God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sunday school, you can be excused. We have, let's clap our hands for our Sunday school children, boy. Sunday school teachers. Sunday school children. Amen. And if you are not a children, don't go to Sunday school. Amen. Bless the Lord. Yeah. Thank God for Sister Precious on the drums. Amen. Uh, we miss, we missing our keyboardist, but hopefully he'll be here next week, by God's grace. Wait, we have so, so much Sunday school. Zoe, Zoe, are you going to Sunday school? <laughs> Bless the Lord. So, wouldn't be long this morning. All right, let me try that again. I wouldn't be long this morning. Hallelujah. I'm standing here by the grace of God. And let me explain what happened. Then you're going to know how I was standing here. Uh, Tuesday was the wife's birthday. And Monday she got the flu. And accused my daughter of giving her the flu. So she wanted to go and get a, a, a sea bath. And we went to the Brother Shamboy, the beach. And the first entrance wanted to pack up and under some trees and there's a stump. I don't know who put the stump there, but whoever put it there, real good. I'm trying to remove that stump and trying and long story short, I pull on it. I went backwards. And after a certain age, your bones tell you a lot of things. And I started to get a lot of pain. I could not move, could not walk, could not sit, could not lie down. And I say, you know what, Sister Janet, being a nurse and the other nurses here, I say, with all this pain, I go in, in the beach and bathe. Whatever went to the left, go, go back to the right. The wave, go put it back somehow. And I bear all that pain all by myself in the water, and I was doing some water therapy. Believe me, Manzel in a beach could give you some therapy. I, I didn't even know if I could drive home because I was making arrangements for uh, the guy's son. 
who doesn't have a license but to drive us home. But by God's grace, we reach home only to, to hear the news. Um, uh, no, that was in Monday. The Tuesday, uh, and reaching home from another event where we went. We went for every day. Somewhere we went. And on reaching home, we got the news. Sorry, Tuesday. Yeah, that is when you can <laughs> say your birthday. We were at the beach. And Tuesday night, when we reached home, with all that pain, we heard the news that our brother has gone to be with the Lord. But I, I love that part that I just end with, that he has gone to be with the Lord. Amen. And that's what we take, and that's what we hope in this life. Because the Bible declares, and I paraphrase in my own words, that if in this life only we have hope, we, or if we only have hope in this life, then we are of all men most miserable. What it means by that, if all we can know and all we can see and all we can believe is earth and everything here, and, we, and some people say after earth and after death, there's nothing to gain and there's... Everything is here. Have you ever hear this story? Heaven and hell is right here? Yeah, yeah boy. Well, that's the people who have hope in this life. But we believers have a hope beyond. Yeah. One glad morning. Yeah. When this life is over. And believe me, my wife tapped me on the shoulder and she said, Pastor, you can sing. Uh, so now I'll never hear me more often. Amen? Uh, and some of you are going to know why she said that. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak on a topic. On, I oh, write it down by. <laughs> how, or oh, how to put it over? How do I forgive? How can I forgive, sorry, and not forget? How can I forgive? And not forget. Because in my earlier life as a Christian, uh, uh, anybody ever experienced hurt in this house? Hurt? I'll go ask the question again, and I want you to look to your neighbor and tell him to talk the truth. Anyone here ever experienced hurt? Somebody doing them wrong? Somebody hurting them? Somebody? Yeah. But I thank God for those who never experience hurt. But keep living. Keep living. Once there's a devil, all of us will experience something called hurt. Pain. Stress. Worries. Sleepless nights. And if you've ever been hurt, if you've ever been hurt, you would understand sometimes it's hard to forgive. I'm going to get real quiet here this morning. Sometimes it's difficult to forgive. Especially when the person is a repeat offender. They hurt you once. You know, they hurt you twice. And then you say, I'm a Christian boy, I need to forgive. And they hurt you three times. And you say, God, like they're overdoing it. And they keep hurting. You know when you experience hurt or somebody hurting you, there's a a tendency of, uh, of rage to build up. And those of us who have been hurt, it's hard to forget. And I can put to the church this morning that it's even impossible to forget. Because people say, you know, the Lord casts, when you come to the Lord, the, the Lord forgives you and he forgets. And I always tell people, if God could forget, then he would not be God. What God does is that he forgives you and he don't bring it back to truth in your face. And those of us who have been hurt, you know, at times when we under pressure and that person giving you pressure and they keep telling you and telling you, you want to hit them under the belt. So you choose the one thing that go get on to them and you remind them what they did 30 years ago. What they did 20 years ago. And I forgive you. And I forgive you the first time and the second. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. All of us have been hurt sometime or the other. Our feelings have been hurt. And sometimes in being hurt, it's hard to forgive. And a lot of people walk around with unforgiveness. 
You know how you know that you have unforgiveness? Anybody want to help me here? When you see that person, you want to call your friends and them to give them a good cut skin. When you see that person, your, your belly start boiling up, and your chest start tightening up, and you start breathing harder. Because 20 years ago, that person did something to you, but you just a mention of their name or smell of their perfume or cologne or, or, or just being around in their presence because when you see them, you cross the road and go on the other side. Amen, somebody. It's going to get tough in here. <laughs> oh boy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You see, we, we as Christians... What we are famous for doing is wearing masks. And I'm not talking about the COVID-19 mask. I'm talking about we're hurting, we're in pain, we're struggling. And then they ask you how things are going. And you smile and say, I am blessed and highly flavored. I am good. Not knowing that like a bag of old age, uh, the chips, the what do you call them? The, the one that have a half chips and a whole set of air ready to burst out. What was what, the name of the chips that have one set of air in it? Lays. Some of us walking around like a bag of lays. We have some hot air inside us ready to steam off. But I tell people, given the right day, given the right time, given the right atmosphere, all the Christian you are, and the devil said today, we go see what you're made of. And some of us want to get back to that person so much, and then we try all kind of things because we really want them to feel what they did to us. Some of us have a PhD in costology. Because when... Is Mike working here this morning? My, watch. For those of you who are looking online, you wouldn't like to see the members' face. A PhD into cussing out. Because when that person, that individual comes at you, you want to get back at them. Let's be real. Amen? You see, you can interfere with me. I am a very cool going guy. But you see, my family, my children, I might, I might go to the grave for my children. And when I reach the Lord Jesus Christ, I might say, Lord, forgive me for dealing with that person. Because some of us, it should be told, we are so good at the mask we put on that we are great pretenders. And there was a group long ago where the great pretenders sing. I can't see some faces here, boy. I ain't seen people blocking up. Hallelujah. We can pretend that everything is all right. We could pretend, you know, yeah, boy, yeah, girl. You know, when you see, we get hurt in our relationship. The boo, the bay, they hurt us. We get hurt in our jobs. People that you trusted uh, and you're, you're, you're confiding, they're going to spread your business all over. We get hurt in our families. Uh, we get hurt by our children because our children that we depended or expected something that this would happen and that would turn out. So they turn the opposite. We get hurt in our church. Amen. Amen. And you, I tell people, you never experience hurt until you experience church hurt. Because in your job, you could probably use your PhD and let them know how you feel. In your home, nobody you know going on, so you could let them know how you feel. But in church, the, the sister don't like her head, but you still have to greet her. Praise the Lord. How are you? I'm blessed. I'm good. And a big smile on her face. In church, there are high procrits and low procrits. And I've been long enough in church to understand that... There are people who just wouldn't like your head. I grew up in church and I know all about that. So today, years ago, I was dealing with a serious hurt. Like, I always get some kind of hurt, but a serious one. Now, early in my life, and the person tell me, told me, sorry, I must talk proper this morning, uh, and said, Mike, Mike, if, if you, um, did, did you forgive that person? I said, yes. He said, can, um, do you still remember it? I say, yes. Say, but well, then you didn't forgive. 
Because when you forgive, you're supposed to forget. Do you understand this? That as human beings, we tend to remember that the things that are negative. And the things that are negative that hurt us, when we keep thinking about it, it boils our blood. Let me go through the scriptures here this morning. Uh, Genesis chapter 30, uh, 45, 4, 5. I'm going to read, it's going to take a little reading here. And I just want you to follow on. I'm reading from a new international version. Genesis, my God, if you can't find Genesis, there's something is definitely wrong. Hallelujah. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants. And he cried out, have everyone leave my presence. Yet there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard him. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land. And for the next five years, there will be no plowing and reaping. But God, somebody shout, but God, sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. So then, it was not you who sent me here, but God. Hallelujah. I don't even think I need to preach again. When you just hear that, but God, it makes me understand that there is a God and he's in control. He made me father to Pharaoh. He, he, he just listen to it. He made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and the ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to them, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Are you getting that? Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and your grandchildren, your flocks and your herd and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of farming are still to come. Other, otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will be destitute. You can see for yourselves and so can my brother Benjamin that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honor accorded me in Egypt and about everything you have seen and bring my father down here quickly. Then he threw his arms around his brothers, his brother Benjamin, and wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talk, talked with him. When the news reached Pharaoh's palace that Joseph's brothers had come, Pharaoh and all his officials were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, tell your brothers, do this. Load your animals and return to the land of Canaan and bring your father and your families back to me. I, Pharaoh, will give you the best of the land of Egypt and you can enjoy the fat of the land. Father God, I pray that you touch your people. Bless your man servant as I deliver your word that somebody's life will be changed, somebody's life will be touched, somebody shout in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I, I don't want to rest a, a trying. I hope it don't fall. So if, if my book fall, don't laugh, right? <laughs> hey, and everything else falling. 
the, the podium keep going down. If, if you read, I must give you the run down here, what is happening. Thank you. Okay, keep it. Yes. Let me give you the run down. Those of us know that the story of Joseph very well. Do you know that it's about 13 chapters that are, is dedicated to the story of Joseph? It's the most amount of chapters in, a Bible, in the Bible that is dedicated to one story. Joseph, as you all know, um, Jacob has four wives. Jacob had one wife, Leah, and her handmaiden, she gave to brave children. And then Jacob married Rachel, and Rachel couldn't be a children, so he, she gives her handmaiden to bring children. Jacob has... I, I read that story and I say... Jacob really enjoy himself. Because he's married to the, the, the first, the eldest daughter. And while she is making children, he marries to the, young, the other daughter, Rachel. She cannot have. And Leah is making. She can't please him because what he really wants is a, daughter, uh, a child from Rachel. And she gives her servant, say, go and, have, go and sleep with her. Make children too. And then Rachel sees that. And say, well, I can make, well, you can sleep with my servant and make children too. And I say, way, well, Jacob benefited by you. He, had no, he, he never said no. He just enjoyed it. Bible have all kind of thing, right? <laughs> Jacob is the, 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 I don't know if it's we'll call it the pimp or whatever. Jacob is the man. And, and, and what happens out of Rachel, she bears Joseph and Benjamin. Jacob, his love of his life is Rachel. And while she bears her firstborn, Joseph, he loves Joseph more than all the other children. There are 12 children, 12 boys, sorry. And out of the 12 boys, and there's one girl, 12 boys, the 12 tribe of Israel, uh, Jacob loves Joseph more than any of the other boys and to show and to prove that love he makes joseph stays home while his brother go and work i kind of feel like joseph here for a while I, 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 and he he makes a coat of many colors and he puts it on joseph and you know when we as parents start favoring another child or we start saying that this one better than that one you know we doom for problems and all my kids, they always say, Daddy, who you think is the best? I say, all, all your best in all your own ways. And all your best at giving me trouble. So I ain't going to put one above the other because I yet I've encountered, I yet encountered, and I still give him a trouble. Amen. So, so Joseph comes around, and if you read the earlier part of Joseph, he dreams that he, his brothers will bow down to him. And Joseph at his young age seems a little arrogant. You know, you know them spoiled children? You know them spoiled children when they can't get a want out of this fuss? You know them spoiled children who believe they're entitled to? You ain't work one day in your life and you're entitled to? You, you ain't paying a bill and you're entitled to? Can any young person say amen here? You ain't doing nothing in the house and you're entitled to? And coming and waiting on... And when, when I come home to tell me... I need money. I tell them, all my children, you know what? You're not entitled to anything. The only thing you're entitled to is that you're obligated to God. And when you, you have a sense of entitlement that you feel you own something, well, think again, because I have nothing to leave for all you. So don't even think twice. Hallelujah. I give this already, and I'll give it again. Uh, one young lady is suing her parents for bringing her into the world because she should have, she should have, um, they should have contacted some median, some person, some psychic to t find out if the baby, unborn baby, the sperm that is in her father's back, wanted to be born. And I shared that with Michaela. 
I, and I said, my kid, I don't even think about bringing me up to court. Yes, she daddy, hey, I, I, don't, I don't know why I'm getting nothing. <laughs> there are nothing there. Why bringing you to court for? Some water, please. Uh, and the, 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 you see, we, I don't know where we're going there. Whenever I stick, the, stick up in there. We live a world in a world of entitlement. Everybody feels entitled to something. You ever come across some, uh, especially, not, I don't know if it's in Trinidad, but when you look at the videos in America, there's a generation who feel that they're disentitled. And they're so entitled that they are spoiled brats. Can I say brats in church? Yeah, anyway, they are spoiled brats that, that, you see, when wars were being fought, World War I, World War II, people were suffering and they had to fight for something. But now the men that fought the wars, they are all dead and gone or gone. And the, the young people have nothing to fight for. So they get up in the morning and they want to be something that they are not they're entitled to. Do you know there's a law in California, somebody said right now that is being passed, that if your child at five years old gets up in the morning that is a boy and decides to be a girl, and you say, no, you're, you're a girl, uh, sorry, your boy, that they can take your child from you because you become an endangerment to your child's well-being. We live in a stupid world. Somebody say amen. Look, what, look at what, what, what Dave, um, Joseph did did joseph met the brothers because every time he went out that day to meet them they are all in hot sun working and the spoiled child walks out already getting dreams and sharing with them and it seems the scripture seems to tell us that when he tell them the dreams he is proud i only go bow down to me i go rule you see, you know why? Because I defer with child of the father. And to make matters worse, he's going and he's wearing this colorful coat that is expensive. I look at a video with the Bee Gees. Any know, anybody, anybody know the Bee Gees? The Bee Gees? Them young people we know what I'm talking about. And how they dress. And when they come out on stage, they glitter in. And the bell bottom and, and the suit real tight. And they glitter in and so on. And I say, imagine uh, uh, Joseph walks around and everywhere somebody looks, they only see in the coat. You ever had somebody who just show off and everything, they, you, 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 know, you know how much money I pay for this watch? You know how much money I pay for the shoes? And, uh, and they tell you once, but they have to tell you ten times more to remind you. They go and shop by Rattans International and they're boasting. Somebody say amen. Joseph calls his brothers into his, his office or his place, the palace. But what Joseph did to show you that forgiveness is in his spirit, he clears the room and he lets everybody leave the room. And he keeps his brothers alone in the room, the ones who offended him and he says to them you sold me you hurt me you throw me in a pit and you sell me into slavery but here i am today as second in command to pharaoh what joseph showed us and is or showing us that when we are hurt and we are dealing with the individuals or individual we don't need to broadcast it for everybody to hear. Because Joseph cleared the room, called his brothers, and he deal with the problem, and he deal with the issues. Joseph did not have the intention to go on social media and start using his thumb fingers on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and start sending tweets and messages. Because when you look at people's profile, they can know when they're going through some kind of hurt. Because they're always quoting some kind of stupidness. Family members are the ones, and, and mother-in-laws, and this one. And they always send any message, but not them, they're using somebody else's quote, but they can know they have problem. Joseph decided, I won't let anybody outside the palace know what's going on 
this is my brothers. They hurt me. But I won't recall. Hallelujah. I, I won't repeat words uh, to others. Let me, be, let me use an example. You know when we hurt him, and it has happened to all of us, that they hurt him so much that they just want to tell somebody. We, boy, I had crowd. If you can't say amen, say ouch. You know when we hurt him, we want to share that with somebody and let them know she really do me this and she talk me bad and she take my mind and she do this and she do that. And I, and I, and I want to get back. That was my best friend. I confided in her, not knowing that snake. Come on, crawl into my marriage. You, any, any Trinidadians in the house? Yeah. yeah. You want to call up your girlfriends and tell them walk with a purse, with a switchblade, a knife, and then we're going to deal with you. Because we know when we get hurt, we want to respond. When they let the world know, when they let the world know that we hurt him. And it has happened to the best of us. Because when we hurt him, and it all bottled up inside, uh, we, we, some of us, uh, you know, some people real good, they can take that and keep it, uh, and they can be like a time bomb waiting and clicking, and they, one day they explode. But your pastor here can't control that. When you see it do me wrong, I need to get it out one time because it go kill me. But the others, other people, can hold that there for months. Thank you, Zoe, for that clap. Yeah, go, you see, like, anybody married here? Anybody married? Anybody intend to get married? Brother Steve? You raise your hand? You lucky Sharon, not here. <laughs> Sister Sharon, if you're looking at this, try Facebook. All right. Brother Shama, you raise your hand. Your both hands? Put it on, put it on, put it on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, 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 um... Married people, when, we, when you have problems, the worst thing to do as a married couple is to get your in-laws involved. Because when you patch up and loving up and make up, them still toting feelings. Amen. And them still watching you bad. You interfere with my daughter and you interfere with my sister and you do this and, and you hurt him and you did that. And you and love are going on. But when you, when you come into the family celebration, they're watching you cut eye. And you ain't know what you do. Five years pass, you still ain't know what you do, but they're watching you cut eye. Somebody say amen. amen. That's why I, well, uh, when I, we got married, my mother-in-law died long before we got married. And my, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. What's, Chan, sorry. <laughs> When we got married, my, my, my mother died. So my wife didn't have a mother-in-law. And my mother-in-law was living quite the only way in Rio Claro. So, so we had to sort things out for ourselves. And my sisters would, would be wrong and they might try to get some information. But being groppy grew as I am, nobody ain't coming around me. to tell me I should treat the girl and this and that and so on. But because I always tell her, what happens in the bedroom stays in the bedroom. Today, we have uh, some grannies trying to look like mummies and some mummies trying to look like daughters and some daughters who are trying to look like I don't know what, but everybody in the same bracket and there's nobody to advise other than the youngers. The Bible says that the older women teach the younger ones. A granny in competition with mommy. You know, bad to look good enough. But know your place. There are some things that don't, you can't wear when you pass a certain age. <laughs> Say that again, sister. Style is not for everybody. And some styles, oh my God. Hallelujah. I always say, as you grow older, what is upstairs does come downstairs. And some of it remain downstairs. Somebody shout amen. My God. Most of these things, here well, here well, I've been honest, say half of these things I say in here, I didn't plan it in the message. I want to give you three points or four points and send you home. 
are still on verse 1. And if you, I'm going to give you a good example. If you need to talk to someone, because everybody always want closure, right? They always want closure. They had to talk to somebody. You had to find some psychologist, and psychologists tell you, you know, you have to deal with the, you, you can your, your emotions are there, and you have to deal with them. But I'm here to tell you, you can control your emotions. And you don't have to tell everybody your problem. Or the best person on any given day when you're going through, you're going through, when you're going through your situation, when you're going through your hurt and your pain, get down on your knees, hallelujah, raise your hands towards heaven and have a talk with Jesus. The song says, have a little talk with Jesus and he you go make it all right. Make a talk to Jesus and put it on Facebook, your problem, and everybody know your problem. That's why I'm careful what I post. Because sometimes I'm, I'm, I, I really want to put my finger on text, but I hold back. Because my emotions are not going to get the best of me. How many of times our emotions get the best of us? And then you blame it on all kind of stupid things. Well, that's how I am. And you don't know my blood close to my skin. And it's getting angry real fast. And they should have know how they're coming at me. Because I don't take. <laughs> my God. All of us have emotions. God built us with that. God, we cry, we laugh, we jump. But my all emotions that we experience are God-given gift. But he also give us control. And we have the control over our mouths. Amen. How many of us do something then regret it? And say, boy, if I didn't know better. I get, just again, real, better, better get, let's go, he come and support me. I ain't getting no clap, no amen here. Second point, do seek revenge. Don't try to embarrass people or recall what they have done in front of others. Because I don't need to know what happened to you. You know, Sandia, sometimes uh, we just don't need to tell people. But if you're telling people, make sure you can tell people you can confide in. And if they confide in them, that they can keep their mouth shut. Because sometimes we tell people things in secret. And the whole church and the whole community and the whole neighbor, they know in secret your business. Amen. Hallelujah. Gil, I'm going to tell you something. I don't want you to tell nobody. Eh? You know, this and that. And, and, and she's going to tell the next neighbor who is the Macum. And I'm going to tell you something that, something that she tell me, but don't tell nobody. And we have, in church, we have phone ministry. No, we don't, we don't really call you, no. We just text, WhatsApp. Hey, that girl going through some pressure. That boy going through some... My God, let me go to my next point. I'm going too far. Don't seek revenge. You, it, it's obvious it, it, that when we, when we think about this, Joseph is thrown into a pit. He's uh, sold into slavery. And he ends up in Potiphar's captain of the guard of Egypt. I just want to remind you that Egypt is running the world. America wants nothing with Egypt of that time. Egypt is a world force, a superpower. And Egypt is running the world. Everybody's looking to Egypt. And he's sold into Egypt. And he ends up in Potiphar's captain of the guard. The attorney general, if you might say. And he ends up there. And the favor of God is upon his life. And Potiphar put him in charge of his household. He said, when I am not here, you're in charge of everything except my wife. Uh, 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 and sister Potiphar sees Joe, Joe and start making move. But his integrity and the young man say, I am falling for that. And you can, for young people to understand, Potiphar is captain of the guard. He, he is the man in command of, uh, of Pharaoh's army. And he, he you know, when you, when you have position, you don't look for no older wife. He looked for something half your age. So you can imagine Sister Potiphar is very sexy 
I, 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 I understand. And Potiphar is out there fighting, and she's walking around with lingerie, trying to entice Jojo. Poor Jojo, why? Poor Jojo. But, but Joseph holds on the integrity, and then she bears a false claim that jo, uh, Joseph tried to rape her, and Potiphar has no other choice but to cast him into prison. How many of us have been through some things? And when you think it can't get worse, it get worse. Ends up in prison how much years? Then the, the, the baker and the butler uh, comes into prison. They're thrown into prison by Pharaoh. And he interprets the dream. Hallelujah. And the, 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 the cupbearer, he goes back to his position while the baker is killed. And, and while he's there, Joseph said, remember me. Sometimes we depend on people to help us, but sometimes God wants us to reach out to him because everything seems to be going in Joseph's favor because he's now in charge of the prison, finds favor. And uh, while he sends the, the, the cup bearer, he says, go back to Pharaoh, but remember me. God says, stay more, two more years. Two more years. Stay two more years. Hallelujah. To make long story short, this man who was from the, the pit, now in prison, ends up in a palace, uh, and he is second in command. He says, God had made me father to Pharaoh, because he interprets some dreams. Pharaoh takes a Hebrew, an outcast, and promotes him to the highest position. What it means by that, when Pharaoh walks out his throne, Joseph is in charge. What it means is when Pharaoh, um, Joseph walks the streets, every person before him has to bow down. Whether he's a Hebrew or not. Bow down. That's the authority. That's the power. And his brothers are now before him. And he could have said, all your scams, all your put me in a pit, all your sell me into uh, slavery. Well, I spent about nearly 13 years or 14 years in prison. You can spend a week. Take a week. Oh, hey, before I announce my, my position, all you, you see them fellas that are set as a uh, thief, all you beat them and beat them good. After all, they did me wrong. I ain't speaking to anybody here. When people do you wrong, you want them to feel. You want them to feel what it is like. How dare you, you hurt me like that. I want you to experience the same thing you... Spoke to a woman years ago that her husband is unfaithful. And while he's unfaithful, she said the psychologist told her the best thing to settle her emotions is to go and take revenge. Can I just put this to everybody here? Anybody who decides to get back and who has done that they will, and talk to them, they will tell you it is a waste of time. Because all that you're feeling and all that you do and all they want to get back to them, when they do it, they feel more guilty. And I want to pose to the church, uh, sometimes the among the hurt we're feeling or the pain that we're feeling, we put it upon ourselves. Okay, let me explain myself. I like, I know I like Alex. So you go on and see a strange number on your husband's phone. You start looking at the number. Want to know how he talk 10 minutes with that person. It have no name. It's all, no name attached. And all of a sudden now, you start thinking, I wonder if he has somebody else. And you see now, the number appears again tomorrow. You ask asking no question. And then you start digging up and realize, you write on the number now. Say, well, I go call it. And worse yet, when you call the number, hello? Is it me you're looking for? And a young lady or a nice voice answer the other and you hang it up. You say, I know. Yeah, boy, I know it. What we you say then, Trinidad? What is it what we just use? Cut all this set of hypocrites now, boy. When he unfaith, when he playing unfaithful or sheep. What do you just call it? A four-letter word. 
Uh, and we go up and then we lie down on our bed and we start thinking and then we, 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 we put in things in our mind and we allow in negative thoughts to come in and because just because you saw a number when you could approach it and say hey I see something here what's going on here who is that and so on and then you will say oh that's a, a business place a, a secretary who will call in for this and so on and explain that hey young people listen now man I've come across people who have luck. I didn't even know you could put locks on WhatsApp. I didn't even know you could put luck on Facebook. So you, your wife could go on your phone, but you still have a lock. On. I didn't even know that until I was working down there and I saw one man. I said, but why at the time we say I lock Facebook, I lock Instagram, I lock this, I lock that. I said, why? He said, so my wife don't go through it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Do you? I didn't even know you can sink phones <laughs> if you buy it for him or her or she buy it. You can sink a phone and get all the messages. Don't ask me how, I don't know. But I've dealt with that. One young lady said, Pastor, every text message you get, I see it. I say, how? She said, well, I've got to tell you by yourself. I was like, hello. When these things happen in our spirit, and the devil know how to get to us uh, because we want revenge. Uh, but I want to remind you what Jesus says. Jesus said, pray for those that despitefully use you. Love your enemies. I can know him in the boy. Oh, I can pray for that no good son of a... And he do him. Oh, I can pray for that no good girl. That, that. But the Bible tells us, Jesus says, uh, even on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them. But they don't know what they do. But she know what she do. He know what he do. How are you going to tell me forgive them? But let me go by the word of God. Because Jesus knew if we only get revenge and we seek revenge and we go, we go behind that person, it will never be the same. People who have killed others because the person killed their family, they said when they thought, they would feel a sense of relief. And release, they felt more guilt. Women or men who has been unfaithful and gone out, they say when they thought that getting back, they say, oh my God, when they thought they would have felt so good, they felt more worse than the person. Because we allow the negative spirits to come in and control us. We allow because, you know, you know, when you see somebody, you know that they did you wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't seek revenge, you know. Pray for them. And we, you know, we so good. We say, we like to use God in it, eh? When we want revenge, we say, don't worry, wherever they reap, they go sow. You ever hear that one? Oh, the Bible says, when you pray upon them or you do good, you give them a drink of water, you're heaping coals of fire upon the head. Burn them, burn them. And you're singing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Say, pray for those who despitefully use you. Yeah, Lord. You're going to quote again, vengeance is mine, say the Lord. So you're like Jonah, and you stand up under the tree, and you're waiting for brimstone and fire to burn down Nineveh. And you say, I hope she in Nineveh, and I hope he in Nineveh, because they go burn them. You know we just get when we want revenge. You see, the Bible didn't tell us pray about that, or about him, or about her. The Bible tells us pray for him. Pray for her, not about it. Because we as Christians, uh, my God, hallelujah, when we start praying, we praying and saying, Father oh God, you know how I feel the hurt and the pain. And Lord, yes, as I went through that, I want them to go through. Yeah, God, let it travel on the bus every day. Let it never get a promotion. Let it fall long and break their foot. And we're going on and on and on. Hallelujah. Let it happen and let it happen. And it should be told. Listen this morning. While you're thinking and you're praying that God might be blessing them. 
Because our job is not to pray for the downfall. It's to pray that they go see the light. And they go see salvation. And they go see a way that's being opened. And you're not seeking revenge. Because if you're seeking revenge, it's about you. And you need forgiveness. But if you can look over it. And they hurt you. And the pain. And the suffering. And you say, God, I'm better than that. I pray that they go see a way. You see, when you're young, you have blood, you have zest, and you, you can go and fight up, but you want to talk to older people, sorry, mature people. And you ask them, but granny, you went through this, did that man was a real scam, look what you do, you have about 20 children, and you just see, don't take it on. It didn't bother me. It bothered me in the early days. That, that, that neighbor that raising your pressure, yeah, it have a time where they just reach to God be the glory. And you, you just put it in the hands of God. Come on, somebody, you can clap your hands, you know. Pray for them, not about them. Don't, 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 don't start. Joseph meet his brothers four times. Four times he had an uh, audience with them. But one time, Joseph mentions what they did to him. This one, this one, all you go like. This one, I ain't getting no email. Joseph meets his brothers four times, but one time he mentions all the children in our pit. All they sell me into slavery. Well, they didn't like my head. The other three times, he did not bring it back up. We are going with it. Pastor, we are going with this one. You know, we have a habit. Uh, when people do us wrong, we forgive. Uh, and when they come and they do some wrong again, we remind them. Oh, ten years ago, you do the same stupidness. And you come and you tell him, you do, 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 and you do this and do that. And you remind them. And every time they may come, you have to remind them about what they did. And some people like things so much. You know, they will make it their duty. If you forget, if you forget, they go remind you, not by words, but by action. But Amalekai, come. Come, 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 come to the front. I want to use an example. But Malachi and me, pay, pay, pay some attention up here. All you're going to need to say, this is how we greet every Sunday boy. Hey, how you going, brother? Thing good? Yeah. All right. Well, me and Malachi have a fallout. Come back, Malachi. Come back. And said, I, I forgive you. Know, we talk about it. Hey, you see all that stupidness you do, man? I forgive you, right? I forgive you. Don't let it happen again, right? Yeah, man. And then the next week I come and say, where you going, boy? Come back here. You remember, I forgive you, right? Don't let that happen again. And then the next year, this is our, we are custom greeting, you know. This is our greeting him now. Give me a hand. We love to do that. We love to let people beg and remind them over and over what they did and how they did and how it hurts and how it pain and we do that and we are all subjects to that because the devil knows how to win a battle. But if we hold our peace and we say, God, into your hands, I commit my spirit today. Help me to love. Help me to forgive. Help me to live above and not beneath. Help me to be an example. Help me to live in integrity. Thank you for that one clap. We like to be people stay behind us. You know, <laughs> let y'all grow up poor, you know. And people used to give you clothes. And there's one individual, anytime they give us the clothes, they say, remind you, make sure and wash that pants good, you know. Make sure and iron it. I, when I had it, it had seam that could have cut, you know. And every time they're looking at you when you're wearing the clothes to see if they, you kept the clothes or they kept it. 
Until one day, I'm in church, and I felt like just ripping all the clothes and say, take it back, take it back. <laughs> Hello? Because you young people and older folks, you living in luxurious life. If, you, if I could have pulled my photo album that lost uh, and you'd have seen me, I don't know what this red pants and an orange kind of, wherever that color and the heels and, the, and I, I sat with the pants down here under my foot and the pants reached somewhere up here because of how long we were in it. You're in church, you're in wedding, you're in funeral, you're in birthday party, everything you win. Not like no. We didn't have, oh boy. Young people, you understand? All they had choice. Look how nice my son dressing up. That would have been my son, the best man every day. Anything I hear, you say, see, man, I stand up posing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say, man. You like people to run after you. And when you see they're doing that and they're trying to, to win your back, now you're making style. And I know married. Fall out. I tell people I like to apologize. See, if, if you have a right, I take wrong. Hey, let me sort out now. I don't like a quarrel. And when we know married, I'm sorry. <clears throat> you don't know where we... Sometimes I, to make things better, I say, hey, hey, hold on. I drop down my sheep foot. I kiss you. Uh, sorry, I kiss that person's foot. And I say, I'm sorry. And then you will see. Once I get a little smile, I know, yeah. But we do decide to carry on that. Any woman know what I'm talking about? Sorry, sorry, a sorry does not seem appropriate because you want more. You want more. And some of us can't handle sorry because we thought the person would have put up a fight and come down and all the other had to go in all kind of theatrics and ninjas come in and there and fighting and the person just walk up and say, a sorry. They find that too easy. Well, let me go to the next. Uh, uh, uh. Four times Joseph meets his brothers. One time he brings it up. How many of us bring up situation that we're not supposed to bring up? Hallelujah. As I end here, Joseph, Joseph, in all that he going through or went through, he turned to them. He said, You sold me. Probably you didn't love me at that time. I feel pain and I feel hurt along the way. But God. <laughs> he said, you see, you see, you don't understand, uh, uh, brothers, because all ten of all you who did me wrong in front of me, and I had the authority to just execute everyone all you immediately. But God. I am the second in charge. I am the prime minister of the world. But God. I am a man of authority. And if I snap my finger, my God, soldiers are there to lock you up. But God. He says, yeah, now, you see, all that happened, it was the divine will of God that God allowed me to go through the pit. <laughs> God allow me to go through the prison. God allow me to go to that place that I could end up here in the palace. And if I didn't go through the pit and the prison, I wouldn't understand what it is to stand here and look back and say, but God, I need somebody here this morning who understands as they look back and to shout, but God, but God, but God. Hallelujah. You see, some of us hold on to moments and we forget the movement of God. We let in one moment spoil our life. When that one moment should have been an experience to take us to the next place that we wanted to go. But we hold on to that moment and we deal on that one thing. But God had a whole movement in front of you that you're going to end up in the palace and we're still holding on to the one moment. Why well, I should have been part of the worship team. And Pastor never called me one day to sing boy. You see that church me and doing nothing. I come 
and I give him a tithes, I give him an offering, and I support the ministry. And they see I have abilities or what? They may know I could do this and I could do that. And pastor is a real scam. You need favor in this one. And favor, oh God, look how he just favor this one. And, and she, I... hello? That is the wrong motive and the wrong attitude. Your one moment that you're holding on to when you should be like this. God, whatever you want me to do, here am I. Whatever you have me to go, here am I. I am a vessel. I am a warrior. I am praying for somebody. When his sisters sing, I'm going to clap her. Let her reach her and her keep reaching. Because when my time reach. When my time reach, somebody, you're not getting it. When my time reach, I know God, you're going to bless me. You're going to open doors because I was faithful in this. Now you're going to open this door and that door. Some people can handle that, you know. Don't hold on to the one moment in life. Use it as a stepping stone. Hallelujah, somebody. Because there's a whole moving taking place. Hallelujah. There's a whole movement taking place. And people still focus on that one time they were heard. That one time. One time. Let me tell you. If you read that carefully. Joseph remembered and let me explain this to the crowd. He remembered, but the storyline when he said it was different. Because to remember really means remembered. It's putting back all the members together for the bigger picture. But if you focus on one thing, you can't put all the parts together because they're going to never work out. When Joseph looked back over his life, he realized I had a dream. And dreams are the lantern that lights our path while we walk this life. And if you have a dream this morning, don't let it go out. Because people will tell you, you can't do this, you can't achieve this, that can't happen. But when God put it in your spirit and you have a dream, just remember, if God put it in your spirit, it will happen. We, hallelujah, we don't like the process. We don't like to spend time in the pit. We can't handle the prison, but we want the palace. But if Joseph knew beforehand that he would have end up in slavery and in the prison, he might have never stepped foot out there with the court. He would have dropped it and his arrogant self would have settled down. But he did not understand the plan of God and we don't understand the full plan of God. Are you understand what I'm saying this morning? People, let me tell you something. Not everybody that smile and talk and applaud you means well. Oh boy, that was an amen moment, eh, boy. Not everybody that say, yeah, boy, yeah, sister, yeah, brother, yeah, boy, means well. No, I don't, I'm not telling you, go and watch everybody like, I wonder. No. Just remember in life that they got those for you and those against you. Just remember in life that other people will push you and people go push it on. Just remember in life that whatever you have in your vision, in vision for your life, that you need to seek God. Let me tell you something. I am talking. And I sung real good, eh? Real eloquent. But if you go back to my life in my earlier time, you, would, you ask most people around me, I would have never be able to stand up and preach. Because I was shy. I went through all them stories how my wife meet me and make the first move and all that. But I was shy. I, 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 I would look down on the ground and really watch people because I, I was shy. But look at me now. I'm preaching the word of God. And I'm ashamed of the gospel of salvation. 
For it is a power of God unto salvation. I am ashamed to tell people about Jesus Christ. Whoever heard, whatever happened, I choose to fix myself. As somebody said some time ago, fix your crown and keep walking and moving on. But here I am. I'm fixing my spirit. I'm fixing my attitude. I'm fixing my behavior. And I'm saying, God, whatever happened, it happened. I can't do anything about that. But I have a whole future ahead of me. And I'm telling you this morning that Davide Church here at Davide is part of the kingdom of God. And we must go forward. We must accomplish because this is about kingdom building. This is not about you and I. This is about the Lord Jesus Christ. This is about salvation. This is about souls being saved. And I have that in my spirit. Because when I stand before God, he ain't saying, Pastor Mikey, Bishop Mikey, Doctor, Apostle, Bishop, Your Eminence, Mikey. When I stand before God, He goes, say, Servant of God, what did you do? And I will say, Well, uh, we do it, we build big church. We do this. We had real people, millionaires, this and that. And he, he, next thing He said, Depart from me, and know you're not. Work of iniquity. That's why I tell people as I end here today, what you see is what you get. Me, I, I hide in nothing. Just our, when you're at home, I'm crazy like hell. When I'm in church, I'm crazy. And wherever you meet me, I just me. I ain't going to change that to suit nobody. I ain't going to change that to step up to your, uh, your, your liking or whatever. I will remain who I am. Can I get an Amen. Because God, because God has, ah, hallelujah, I could look back over my life and I could shout, but God made a way. I could look back over my life and say, but God brought me out. I could look back and remember and put it together and say, God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God. If it had not been for God on my side, I would be dead. But here I am standing in the presence of God and I'm shouting hallelujah. Anyhow, if it had not been we had a witness here this morning. Let's all stand. I guess you had enough. Amen. Joseph named two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Ephraim means God has caused me to forget. And I want to tell you today, Whatever we go through, and I put myself in this right, that excluding this human being as me. When we choose to seek revenge, when we choose to recall the event, when we choose to let people toil and beg for forgiveness, when we choose, just remember that God has been good to us. Amen. Just remember that God has forgiven us, and the same way we... Do you understand what the Bible says? The Bible says... That you need to forgive others that God will forgive you in the heavens. And how can we be forgiven if we can't forgive others? Pastor, but you don't understand. It keep coming up. It keep coming up. It keep happening. I, I, I can't forget it. I'm not asking you to forget. I'm asking you to deal with it. And if you deal with it, with the help of God, you're going to realize after a while, it don't bother you anymore. You're going to look at that person in the eye. You ain't have to run across the road, you know. You're going to look at the person in the eye and just smile and move on in life. Tell somebody next to you, Pastor, talking about you. <laughs> Tell the other person, he's talking about you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father God, as we come to an end today, I pray, God, that that spirit of unforgiveness that that comes up and resides. And the devil knows that if he have us living in unforgiveness, uh, that he has us where he wants us. Or blood pressure going up. Or heart racing. Headache. Nauseousness. God, when we see that person, it brings all these things. Uh, but God, why we forgive is in an instant. Dealing with the issue takes a while. And Father, today I pray, as we learn to let go, as we learn to depend upon you, 
that we will think to ourselves, Oh God, unless I forgive, you cannot forgive us. Father, I pray today that you forgive us and have mercy. And whatever the hurt, whatever the pain, whatever we have gone through, oh God, or whatever we are going through, that we be able to go down on our knees and shout hallelujah and cry out to Jesus to help us. My God, that you make a way for every person that is here, those who are looking online, that we will learn to let go. That we will learn to leave it alone. That we will learn to love again. Father, we pray for your people. In Jesus' name, let's all shout amen. amen. Clap your hands for the Lord. And for those who are viewing online, we thank you for viewing. And that you, any prayer request that you can call or text. Uh, and we will just pray with you in Jesus' name. So God bless you until another week. By God's grace. Hallelujah. You can be seated in Jesus' name.